for about seven years now as a business analyst. Um, I work in the Pune office. I've traveled here for the Agile India conference. Um, so we're going to talk about Lean today. Uh, just before we start, can you guys hear me? OK? OK. So we're going to uh, not be sitting. Uh, we're going to come and play a game. So I'm hoping all of y'all, as many of y'all, that uh, we can accommodate in this production line. Uh, so we're going to try and be part of this production line, as many of you uh, guys can, uh, can make it. Other than that, uh, we're going to play a game, which hopefully is fun. Uh, can yeah, just settle down. We'll, we'll come and join the production line soon. OK, so um, just a quick check. Uh, what, what, how much do you guys know about Lean? Have you practiced it in your organizations? Have you read about it, learned it? Mike, did you know? Okay, <laughs> thanks. Huh. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Do you want to talk about a little uh, what do you understand by lean? Okay. Okay, okay. Anyone else want to just give a couple of words on what they understand? How does lean help? What is lean? How is it different from agile? Is it different at all? Uh, doing just about enough uh -huh. to uh, deliver uh, the iteration goal. Okay. This is one way I look at uh, lean. Okay, okay. Uh, not creating in a place that has to be eliminated later. Okay, okay. That's, that's good. good. Okay. okay. Please. Simplify more. Sorry? More simplified. Okay. Simplifying things as much as you can. Eliminate waste. Yeah. yeah. Similar to what he said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nicely put. All right. So let's get to it. Um, can you guys come over? So I'd like to have at least four or five people per table. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a production line uh, in very similar to how they do it in the manufacturing industries. Each, each table is a workstation. So we need five people at each workstation. And yeah, sorry, no sitting. So. Yeah, but yeah, we're do, just doing one, so the rest of you all will need to uh, observe for today. Yes, please. Actually, six is also okay. okay. If the, if it's getting a little crowded, we could just push the tables here a little bit. Yeah, just. Thank you. Yeah, we just need a little bit space in in the middle of each. I think this is fine. This is fine. All right. Okay, let's to it then. Um, OK, uh, really quickly talking about why we're here. Uh, like I already said, we're going to try and cover a couple of lean concepts, which we'll see as we go through the workshop. Uh, the idea is to um, use this production line, play a game, and then try and grasp what the real principles of lean are. Um, while we're doing that, I'm also trying, going to try and make a, draw a parallel between what le how lean helps in the manufacturing industry and how it actually will help in our software world as well. So that's another goal that I'd uh, try to achieve at the end of this uh, session. OK, uh, so really quickly, this is Taichi Ono. He's called the father of uh, the Toyota production line. Um, and the most important thing that he really taught is that waste is the most important uh, idea that you need to understand when you're, when you're trying to adapt lean. Anything that does not add value to the customer is waste. So what we're going to try to do today is A, understand what are the seven types of waste that, that the TPS or the Toyota production uh, tries and tells us. Inventory, extra processing, overproduction, transportation, waiting, motion defects. These are all the seven types of waste that are taught in the, uh, in the lean manufacturing study. But what we are going to try and do is, first of all, to under, uh, identify waste and then see how to eliminate that, right? OK, so let's get to it then. Here's, here's the workshop that we're going to do. Uh, really simply 
There'll be a hands-on activity for, about, for a couple of minutes. We'll retrospect what happened, what went well, what didn't. And then we'll learn from that, and we'll go to the next iteration. So we're going to literally do three iterations. Um, like I said, we're going to try and pr uh, simulate a production line. So each of you are workstations. If you see on your table, there's team one, two, three, four. Uh, if you see, if team one can see on their very, what is this, left, uh, right, sorry. This is your inventory. So there's each table also has an inventory that you need to work with. Okay, so let me just talk through that a little bit. So team one, you will pick up uh, your inventory from inventory A, bring it on your workstation. Uh, you, you, there is a paper on your table, which you, we'll turn around in a second, which has specific instructions that only you need to follow. And then after you've built what you've asked to be built, you will keep it on inventory B, ready for team two to pick up. So team two, you will pick up the inventory from B, bring it over, work, put it on C. Does that make sense? Same way for you guys. Team three picks up from C, builds, puts it on D. And you guys, again, picks up from D, put work on your station, and give it to E. But what's important at E is that we'll have a customer standing there. OK? So at the end of the day, what are we trying to build? We're trying to build something for the customer. right? So you'll have a customer standing there who is going to accept or reject the houses that you've built. Fair enough? Everything OK till now? We, you'll, you'll, you'll know in a second. You'll know in a second. <laughs> OK, so like I said, we're going to build a Lego house. Just talk through the, how the process of the game is going to proceed. Um, really quickly, let's try and see. Yes. As soon as you flip your uh, sheets over, which I see most of you all have, you will know exactly what you need to be done. Uh, very quickly, trying and seeing the house cost, right? So we're trying to build uh, houses in Bangalore because, like we see, they are extremely expensive. So we're, our company is trying to build a lot of houses in Bangalore. A really quick cost, we, each Lego brick, so each brick for the house costs about 10 rupees. Uh, each house that we build will be sold for 1,000 rupees. right? So if, if everything goes perfectly well, uh, we, ha we, we actually have uh, a scope to make a profit of 900 rupees, which is excellent, right? Okay, cool. Um, at the end of each iteration, we're going to measure success because that's extremely important. Again, we're going to see how much cost we have incurred to build how many houses, how many houses actually got accepted and hence sold, and what's the profit we made. Okay. Okay. Enough talk. Uh, each team, can you quickly check if team A has a bucket of Lego? Yes, team B has a bunch of bricks. Everyone OK with that? All right, so does everyone understand what they need to do? I'll give you just a couple of seconds to turn around your sheets and go through it really quickly. be about two minutes. Ready? Any questions? Yes, please. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So these are your instructions only. This is for this team, your team four. You're, and the customer is going to stand there, right? Okay. So you're the final team that's actually building the house. Okay. And those three teams are going to help you with the inventory required to build the house, which is why you have the whole set of instructions. You have the exact specifications to uh, build the house. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, I'm going to start now if there are any more questions. OK, another rule, rule of thumb. Uh, you guys are working in a typical, typical manufacturing firm, so each department doesn't talk to the other. <laughs> Period. The floor manager can talk to the No. <laughs> I'm the floor manager, so you ask me or him. OK, it's getting from there then. Yeah, so this workstation does not talk to that, right? OK, any uh, final questions before we start?
All right. Ready to go, guys? Louder, ready to go? Do we need to wait for them to do something? Or we can start our work? You, OK, each workstation needs to be done, a, uh, needs to do exactly what you're told to do. Okay. Nothing else. No, you do exactly what you're told to do. You don't look anywhere else. OK, I've given you all enough time. Ready to go? All right. Iteration starts now. Start building. You're not to talking to other departments. Grab stuff. So if you could come this side, just leave a little gap here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It was just for you guys. You can use. Yeah, if you don't need it. So no, where is our alarm? Yeah. Alarm karo na. Zero houses. Excellent. OK. Let's give five minutes to see what happened. All right? Um, yes, we do. Yeah, let, let's do cost first. So so each table, just a rough number of bricks that you have on the table currently. Very rough estimate, 75. How about team two? 150. How many? Approximately. OK. Two, I don't know, you do the math. 200. I'll say 300 combining two In the in the on the production line right now on each workstation, okay, so that's about 360 into 10 bricks, uh, 10 rupees one brick, okay, and number of houses sold zero, okay, so profit is negative. Excellent, good job, guys. No clap. No? Okay, all right. Quick, what do you guys? How do you guys? How do you think it went, guys and girls? Why? Good. good. Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah, because see now um, there are a lot of errors in what we need to do. Only they know what they need to build. Uh -huh. And they are not going to what just grab and just to keep it here. And they'll pick it whatever they want. Right. So they're not making it time effective what we need to do. Right. People need to do. So it didn't go well then? Definitely. Yes. Okay. But it's good. At least we know what, what they want to do. Okay. Okay. But what do you think? Okay. So what does this number mean? What do you think? It means to have. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a lot of waste, which is, and what kind of waste do you think it is? There's a lot of work in progress, right? What does bricks mean? Bricks mean that. You were trying to build something with those bricks, but it actually never went all the way through to make a house. So it was all work in progress. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? So how many unused Lego bricks? A lot of them versus houses sold were absolutely zero. So like you guys rightly said, that's, that's, that's one kind of waste that you want to look out for. Um, let's put in a little bit more thought into how this process happened. Right? Uh, we predicted market demand. Did any one of you all know what the market, what the customer wanted? Right? At the very end, I came and told you that I need a yellow house. 
which is when you started looking for yellow. Otherwise, you were building a red house if I wasn't wrong, right? So what happened there is they started building for the first one and a half minute. And then I went and said as a customer, hey, you know what? I want a yellow house. So we didn't know. None of us knew what the market demand was. We just predicted that, yeah, someone probably someone requires a yellow house. So we started building a yellow house. You guys didn't even think about the color, right? You just took whatever that you saw. You started building using the specifications. Mass production. Again, we didn't know how much, how many houses, like you rightly pointed out. Nobody knew how many houses the market actually wanted. And we achieve econ economies of sale, scale, right? We just continued to build and build whatever we thought we predicted, and we started pushing it over to the next uh, workstation. Yeah, but that's typically what will happen in a manufacturing uh, production line, right? So this is called a push system, where you're predicting what the customer wants, and you're pushing your demand to the customer without actually understanding what they want. Uh, back in Henry Ford's time, this was a very classic uh, sort of statement that was used. Henry Ford used to say, yeah, yeah, make it any color as long as it's black, because Henry believed that the market uh, required only black colored cars. Now, the reason it worked in his time, at least, is because he had monopoly, right? There, wasn't, there weren't a lot of Hyundais and, I don't know, uh, Hondas out there. So it worked in his time, but would it work today? Let's try and relate this to our world, to software. How many uh, companies do you know that have assumed what the customer wanted and pushed products out there and miserably failed, right? Orkut was, is a really good example here as well. They, they did really well, but they, they'd never actually uh, tried to learn what the customer wanted afterwards and hence failed eventually. OK, so now we're going to try and change what we did in the first iteration. What we're going to try and do is a pull system. We'll, we'll sort of try and reverse the trend here, right? So we'll first try and understand what the customer wants. We'll build only as much as required by the market. And we'll adapt. We'll adapt what that requirement is, and only then will we build. Right? Like I said, this is called the pull system. Make only what is needed, only when it is needed, and only in the amount that is needed. But why would we do this? Like you guys have already pointed out, right? We don't have. We don't build more than is required. Again, trying and relating that to software is extra features, right? You, when we're building software so many times, we just think that, yeah, yeah, this is going to be brilliant for the market, but we don't really actually go and do market surveys to see if, if those features are required. And hence, we push, keep pushing out features. And to avoid wasted inventory, which is partially done work or work in progress. Sure. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, like someone else said this just before we started, the push system, what we did before, is just in case production, which is just in case someone needs it, I'm just going to build it and put it out there. But as opposed to the pull system, is just in time production, right? I'm going to build it only when it's required. One way of achieving this is using Kanban. Anyone knows what Kanban is or used Kanban? Yeah. Anyone? So basically helps you uh, track what the progress is against, uh, mm -hmm. the bottlenecks mm -hmm. uh, during the flow of production. Right. And you try and eliminate the bottlenecks in that particular phase. Yeah. yeah. You shuffle resources, and you concentrate on that particular phase where you're working to progress, progress limit is broken. Right, right. right. Fair, Fair enough. enough. So that's good. Exactly. exactly. It, it's Kanban is nothing, nothing but some way to identify, identify something. something. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. So, so it's, it's literally in Japanese, I think. It just means a signal of some sort. Right, um, Starbucks coffees. Have you guys noticed that the coffee mug actually has have some kind of identifiers on them? To to do exactly that. So if you if you go back to Starbucks or even McDonald's, when you when you're at the cashier, you tell him you want a cafe latte. It's not like a cafe latte is already made. He takes he takes it he takes your order, ticks it, pushes it back into the kitchen. The kitchen then makes it and then gives it back to you. Right. So it's very similar in, in that sense. Again, same thing, decaf or any other. 
So now what you're going to do is we're going to try and implement Kanban in this, in this production line now. If you see on your tables each inventory, there are four color cards. Okay, we're going to use those cards to indicate Kanban, to indicate if I should work or what should I work on. Okay? Um, and we're going to implement the pull, pull system using Kanban. Um, the way we're going to do this is first we're going to try and understand the market demand. Only when team four pulls something from inventory C, right? D. D. From inventory D, will you guys start working on something? For example, if they pull in a yellow, if your yellow card becomes empty, only then that's an indicator for you to know that, okay, I need to, I need to refill that yellow card. That's when you'll start building. That's when you'll pull yellow from next, bring it here. And that goes back to you guys as well. You know that your yellow card is empty, I need to refill it. So you will go pull yellow from your previous inventory. Does that make sense? So we, it's really simple. We're going to use the color card indica to indicate whether I should work and what I should work on. Fair enough? OK. Uh, inventory check done? Yes. Yeah. Everyone has enough bricks on their table? No, we don't have the color card. Uh, that, that, that's the customer. I'll give it to you. All right, ready, go to, ready to go? I have to set the timer. OK. You guys don't yeah. seem excited at all. <laughs> ready to go. Yay, we're building houses. OK. All right, iteration two, start. Read your instructions, follow the same set of things. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, good. Again, you can't talk. No, 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 you can't. No, no. You cannot still talk to your friends. <laughs> okay. Okay, good, good. Okay. Yeah. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Hmm. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> okay. Inventory check. How many uh, bricks on the table? Unused. Oh, even you guys gave stuff back, is it? It's ridiculous. Okay, I should remember to put that as a rule Asya. next time because it's never <laughs> happened that someone throws it back. Yeah, totally. How many? 45. And here? Total? Okay. So 220. How many houses sold actually? Yeah. It's not sold yet. I didn't buy it yet. No, no, no. He kept changing. I know. I'm the customer. All right. That looks OK. Does that look the same? Customer yes. can't lift the home and check. <laughs> <laughs> customer is God. I can do anything I want. Aren't they different color yellows? No, same. No, no, this yeah, is the lemon and. But it's the inventory we got. It's not I our. I don't care. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Defect. 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 Oh, Zero and then two. To the money and? Uh, 2,000, I guess. Huh. All right. How do you think that went? Much better. Why Why do you think it's much better? Sorry. The pullback was really good. Uh-huh. What the customer wanted and we built the stuff back. Okay. Okay. You were saying something? Uh, less profit. More profit. Uh -huh. uh, less, less work, work in progress. In progress. Yeah. yeah, so hence so less, less cost. cost. Okay. Yeah. What else? W what did you guys think? We didn't have people. Uh, okay. They were a little bit organized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's not very organized. Let me tell you. Okay. But, but you guys, guys were happy. happy. Did, did you think you were working, working a lot? Yes. Okay. Uh, How about you guys? guys? How was your work? There's not much coordination between different teams. Right, right. <laughs> and then pushing back also. Yeah. But other than that, but just within your work cell, do you think you, there was a lot of work? Much better than the last time. OK. The understanding is better. OK. So we're waiting for But uh, what I noticed, at least, was that you, m most of you were waiting like that for some time, right? 
everything was not utilized. Even one as well. Is that fair? Yeah. So I get that uh, we were th there was less cost. We actually sold more houses. But what my observation was is that they were extremely worked up. Like they were working a lot, as opposed to these three teams were not so much, right? Um, so this is again something that even in our uh, projects we need to think about, right? It's not only about your role. You need to think about the system as a whole. And I think that's a little broken at the moment. Right? So while one team was working a lot, a few of us were sitting idle. What do you think that is? Waste. Yeah, absolutely. So the resources are not getting utilized as efficiently as you'd want them to be. Right? So this is something called Mura, which te uh, technically means unevenness in work. Right? So the teams waited for, you guys waited for them to tell you what to do, and only then you started working. Right? Um, so what are, what are some of the things that you think we could do to make that better? <laughs> one, one, one. Sorry. OK, how do you think that will help? Different rooms on the same house, so you're not. <laughs> we could do that. Uh-huh. Resources known also. OK, OK. They can develop probably more houses. Fair enough. OK. What else do you think we could do? There should be visibility for you know, what, what is the exact requirement. There's what should be? The exact requirement. Right. Um, OK. Merge the team so that the uh, skill set is uh, spread across the layers. OK, fine. So that will help how? Right. So uh, by the time you are towards the end, mm -hmm. you'll have uh, sort of a semi uh, finished product, product which you can just uh, assemble to finish. Right. So that's a good point, right? Uh, because at this point of time in the production line, each of you are doing only the four instructions that you're given, not knowing what the end goal is, not knowing how the house even needs to look. Right. So again, going back to what I'm sure we see in our lives as well is. It's, it's at least my view is that it's better to be a generalist in what you're doing rather than just being a specialist. I mean, again, it can go both ways, but what helps is what this, what this gentleman already suggested, right? That if we are, each of us have enough information of all the tasks so that we are well informed and hence we can help out in whichever way we can in that given uh, set of, to build the product. Does that make sense? You will know in a second. <laughs> OK, again, trying to come back to software and our, our world. How many of you all know what this is? Yeah? yeah. Scrum board, agile board. Yeah, this is a typical physical wall that most agile scrum teams will use. Um, again, what stuff, some tasks that are ready for dev, something that's in development, something that's in QA, right? Uh, what typically we've seen, uh, I'm not sure if you, you guys would agree with me, but the QA wall is generally, the pipeline is generally overfilled, right? QA is always back, um, lagging back a couple of iterations. I'm sure you guys have heard this quite a lot, right? So one way what we could help with is adding a work in uh, VI, WIP line, right? So if there are more than, limit the work in progress, which is what one of the things that we did, right? If there are two cards in QA, we will not take any more, accept any more cards into the QA lane. Uh, what that means for dev is that either they stop working or they could actually help out QA as well. Right? Does that make sense? So this is again going back to being a generalist versus a specialist, right? If the dev is able to help out in another role, you're going to be able to reduce Mura, which is uneven workload. Fair? Uh, right, another important and I think my, one of my favorite, favorite concepts in Lean is Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. So the, the coolest part about this was that it's not that the floor managers, someone mentioned floor managers before we started. Uh, in, in the Toyota production system, the floor managers or the, the managers in general were not, they were not the only people who were responsible for uh, a successful delivery of something. Uh, the employees, the workforce were enabled so that 
within their tasks that they're given, they were they were almost pushed to see how much how they can improve it every single day. So it wasn't the manager only responsible to say, okay, you know what, you sit that way or you do this that way better. Each work employee was enabled, was empowered to think of ways to uh, make their work efficient, bring it up, and hence try and improve what they currently do. So I think this is also very, very important for us to try and implement in our software IT world as well. I've tried this a couple of times in my project teams, um, and it really helps because the manager really uh, does not need to micromanage as such, right? because the manager will need to see at the top level. But it's really the developers, the QAs, the BAs who are doing the real work, they're really on the floor, right? They are best placed to be able to see what are the small tweaks I can do to be able to make my uh, delivery of software better or delivery of the iteration of the scrum better. So I, re I strongly suggest that each of you all, when you go back to your project teams, try and uh, include this in your stand-ups or in your retrospectives. If there's if each of you can think of ways to improve what you're doing in your work, workspace every single day and try to bring that up to improve your uh, life cycles. OK, we have a little time left. What we're going to do is we're going to reduce all of you all within three workstations. And each workstation will be given uh, a inventory to build houses. OK? And I think you've already suggested one way to get the speciality that these guys have of actually knowing what to build is we'll integrate them within the three teams. Does that make sense? So that they will know what are the specifications each one, you, each one of you had, and you will know what the end result was. Right? But question though, how would team one know what team two and three was doing? Yeah. Does that make sense? Because even if each of them go into one and three, you would, they would never know what you did. You would never know what they did, right? So one way, and here again, right, we, we've sort of used Kaizen to just quickly tweak that. This is not typically how I would run the session. I would just make these people go in and then give you guys sheets to read and uh, know what to do. Blank faces. Does that make sense? Yes. OK. So what we're suggesting is, Self-organized, right? Four teams come together, uh, manage yourselves in a way that each team should have at least one member of each workstation. Go. We can do four teams. We can do three teams. Whatever you guys want. Take, take about two minutes as a group to manage that. Take a minute or two to see what you need to be done and uh, need to do. You need. Hey, where are the? Three, and you are from here. So you guys have someone from each. You guys are good. Okay. You guys are good. Yes. Okay. You guys are good. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you. Let's start iteration three, guys and girls. Yes, I will tell you the market demand. Where is my market demand? OK, I'll tell you the. All right, start. I want a yellow house. You need to wait. Hold on. Hold on. This is your inventory. What about this team? Sorry. Here is your inventory. Take. This is your inventory. What is the first market demand? Yellow, right? But you have a person from team four to help you understand what needs to be built. That's what we decided, right? No, no, forget it. Just use any yellow, don't worry. 
I'm just giving you more inventory. Market demand. Uh huh. Did you already build? So we're supposed to be building the houses. Yes. Start red. So which color? We don't have specific. What do you think we should do? We're we're trying and implementing Kaizen. You tell me what we should do. You decide. So you need to tell which color you want. Red. 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 Okay. So we need a red tile. So we can just build. Yeah. Okay. How many? You know. Yes. What do you need? You just build the house. We know, but we don't know. But you are from Team Four. Blue, blue houses. Blue is the new red. Own production line. No passing on. Yes. You need more inventory. Yeah. Just pull from here. Sorry, can I just take some? Two. One. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'd like to see you do. What about Team Three? We have four companies and uh, six in company. The last uh, company. Oh. 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 You do know that none of them are complete, right? This is a complete. No. 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 Bye. 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 You tell me where is your final picture? Go down. No. No. Oh. That's your final picture. This is step nine. Needs to look like that. That's your final picture. Fail, fail, fail. Zero houses built. Oh. What about you? Two green, one yellow, and one blue. Awesome. Good job, guys. So all down how many? Um. Seven. Seven houses. Five, six, seven. Uh, don't count the whole box. <laughs> just just that stuff that you pulled out. <laughs> and you, team four. I'm serious. I, I need, really need to come back to your companies and see. <laughs> okay. Okay. We lack some coordination. Uh huh. So some of us were not doing anything. We were just they were confused of what to do. Mm hmm. It didn't go on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the person who was closest to the customer vision actually ended up contributing the most probably to the activity, even helped us coordinate amongst us. Okay. That's a very good thing. The person who was on yeah. and team four. Okay. Yeah. So that is good. What else? I think you guys did the best. What do you think helped? Yeah. So in our case also, the person who came in from the end last team, team four, uh -huh. uh, contributed the most in terms of the idea and, and vision of the uh, final finished product. Okay. And uh, that really helped. Did you guys talk about yes. organizing yourselves yes. in a specific way? Actually, it's a teamwork. Okay. How? How? Can you talk about that? Yeah. So this idea also came in from a, a gentleman, and where he spread the work based on his previous experience. Okay. 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 You do this. You do this. You do this. Okay. Based on the steps yeah. given in the paper. Okay. Okay. So, so you use the steps step to actually uh, yeah. make it. Yeah. 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 And yeah. everyone yeah. was involved. Yeah. And everyone was involved. Okay, so you almost had a mini production line, but all of you were talking. Uh, there was a lot of collaboration, right? Okay, so I think you guys didn't do very well. Um, you said there was chaos. Why do you think there was chaos, though? Okay. Okay. But you still had folks from this team. Yep. I think you and so. But you must have seen it on that. Okay. 
Understood. Uh, sorry, I'm just saying that the, I, I get that the specification wasn't there, but one of the things that we decided as a group to do is if each group should have one member of uh, the workforce, right? What that means is that whoever was on team four, they actually knew the specification for two iterations until now. So I get that you didn't have the paper, but the point was that you had people who, expertise, right? You had expertise from that group in your group to help maintain that. I guess, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so that sort of brings us to the very end. Uh, very quickly doing a recap. We, talk, we saw what the seven types of wastes in production are. We sort of touched upon extra processing, overproduction, waiting, inventory, right? Drawing a parallel to software, um, we spoke about partially done work, right? You, you want to push something to production, yeah. But, yeah, but even in software, right? You want to push something into production, but you can't right now because you have half of a feature build. QA is not ready to sign it off, things like that. Uh, gold plating, extra processing, like we were saying earlier, right? All the bells and whistles uh, that maybe the customer doesn't even need. Uh, extra features. Waiting, waiting for someone else to, uh, some of the process to come through before you take things to the next stage. So this is sort of drawing a parallel, of, and I'm sure you guys have read uh, Lean Software Development by Mary Pavendik. I think it's a great book that helps, gives you small tips that you could use on your everyday projects. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, there are a few more concepts that uh, I typically cover as well, uh, which, which include things like uh, what happens if there's a defect in your production line. What are some of the things, yeah, like the defect there, right? So what would you typically do in that case? Uh, how, how best can you build quality into your production system as opposed to have QA at the very end, right? So there are some of those things. So there are lots of lean uh, principles that it's good to read upon because it's not only specific to manufacturing. There's a lot that we can learn from it and use in software as well. So yeah, that's me. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, I know it was a little. Thank you very much. Take care.